Hello, and welcome to the Breaking Defense interview series. I'm your host, Barry Rosenberg. Today, we're going to be talking about internet operations management for network situational awareness. Joining me to discuss this is Joe Lynn, Vice President of Product Management for Cortex Government. Joe, welcome to the program, and thank you for joining us. Barry, thanks so much for having me. So let's jump in with the first question. Is IOM for military networks different than it is for federal or industry networks? Great question. Uh, not at all. And maybe to, to kind of help put this within context, let me first start by answering what is Internet Operations Management or IOM, right? Um, IOM is how an organization, a large, complex, distributed organization, continuously discovers, monitors, manages, inventories, all of its internet connected, internet facing systems. Um, and this includes everything from traffic with gray space internet to various types of devices and assets that are exposed on the public internet, hosted either on premises or in the cloud, right? And so when we kind of look at internet operations management from that perspective, it's easy to see the applicability, not just for the military, not just for uh, various departments of defense, uh, but also for federal civilian agencies, for large government networks, uh, but also for large uh, commercial customers as well, like Fortune 100 companies. Um, all of them have this fundamental problem, which is around how do they manage, understand, track, discover everything that belongs to them that is exposed on the public internet? Um, and how do, they, how do they manage this process uh, in an end-to-end, -end, um, uh, in, a, in, a, um, in an integrated end-to-end -end fashion? Thanks, Joe. What makes military networks particularly suited to IOM? Yeah, so military networks are, uh, generally speaking, very large. They're, um, they're, they can be highly federated in nature, um, which makes um, managing uh, all of your internet-facing assets that much more difficult. And in the military, there's this concept of uh, command and control. And uh, because of the large distributed, highly federated nature and sometimes expeditionary nature of military networks, um, it makes command and control of those networks that much more difficult or that much more complex, which is part of the reason why there's such a demand, such a need for IOM capabilities uh, in militaries around the world. Good information there, Joe. How does IOM play with legacy systems? Yeah, so a big part of legacy systems is oftentimes um, ensuring that they are properly secured behind firewalls, making sure that they're not exposed on the public internet because they may have inherent vulnerabilities, um, vulnerabilities associated with their software that are simply unpatched, um, that simply are no longer supported um, by their original manufacturer. Uh, and so because these vulnerabilities can be so serious, uh, and so easily exploitable by adversaries, it's that much more important to ensure that they're properly secured. What IOM enables um, owners of legacy systems to do is to first and foremost ensure that they're not exposed on the public internet, that they're not discoverable by adversaries, that they're properly secured. And if there's ever any sort of misconfiguration that occurs, where these types of leg legacy systems are unintentionally exposed on the public internet, they're discovered as soon as possible, ideally before an adversary has the ability to exploit them. Thank you. We hear a lot about data lakes as a key element to make better use of data. Describe a data lake and the role it plays in network management. Sure. Um, you're going to get, you know, a hundred different answers from a hundred different people on this one. But at, at just a, a very, very basic level, when we're talking about a data lake, what we're really talking about is a, a, an environment in which you have uh, an enormous amount of data, a high quantity of data, as well as highly heterogeneous data that is brought together, integrated and made mutually interpretable. Um, so that the data are able to relate to one another. Uh, and so that really at the end of the day, you're not just collecting data for data's sake, but so that you can run uh, analytics on top of that data. You can use machine learning in order to derive insights from the multitude of data that you're able to collect uh, 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 from, from your entire system. So I've had the pleasure today of talking with Joe Lynn from Palo Alto Networks. Thanks for joining us, Joe, and thank you for watching. Goodbye.